Continuing our look of Conference USA basketball here in Frisco, Texas. Now we go to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, home of Letha's Barbecue. Had to throw that in there. Joining us, the head women's basketball coach, Joy Lee McNellis. Always great to see you. Good to see you as well. And the head men's basketball coach, Doc Sadler, who gave us an incredible thrill during Conference USA tournament last year. I'm going to go to the women first. That's Joy Lee, looking at your team this season, four starters return. You and I converse a lot. Your team practices, from what I've seen, have been very competitive and very enthusiastic. Fair? You know, we, we pride ourselves in that because I believe that you practice the way you play. And, you know, games are very intense. And I think that you have to prepare your team, even a little for tougher situations, mm -hmm. particularly when you go on the road, to be able to perform in hostile environments right. and you know we grind we really do we work very <laughs> hard um, all programs do but I do think that we go sometimes a little above and beyond because of my belief of because of the way we play you know if you're not a fast-paced team you don't always have to do that right. but because we're going to play fast because we're going to press 94 feet you have to be able to get players acclimated to that we have six newcomers this year mm -hmm. and so in order to have six newcomers and to get them ready ready for the pace, the speed, the physical play, you have to do those things. You, you do pay a, play a fast pace, but coming with that sometimes turnovers. 18 yes. turnovers a game had to drive you crazy last it, year. It does. And, but again, I think that last year we had way too many. But I think with a young team, mm -hmm. you have to understand that. You have to, you have to accept that. So you, until you kind of get through the flow of things, as a head coach, you just have to deal with that. And I think that comes with playing fast and, and playing a speed up game. So again, those are things that we're working on. Actually, we have a board on the sideline and we sprint every day for turnovers. We started that day <laughs> one. Uh, our strength coach stands over there and tallies every turnover and it's individual and every individual has sprints at the end of practice. Just because we want to make them aware of what their turnovers are, how they made them, and then it helps us as right. coaches when we watch film in preparation for that because 18 is a little much <laughs> and we have to improve on that. Well, one of the things that the team did this summer is they went to Costa Rica. Joy Lee said the trip was amazing. Forget about the basketball and for the moment, forget about the 10 extra practices. Talk about the camp you went to. You know, the amazing thing was is we, we were able to do a lot of things, a lot of team building, uh, leadership, fellowship, mm -hmm. but I will tell you the most amazing thing was the camp with 200 children where not one kid spoke English <clears> and <throat> basketball was the common language. It really was. Our girls did a phenomenal job of doing station work with them, getting them to break down in a <clears throat> defensive stance, getting them to shoot layups, free throws, proper shooting form, and no one spoke the same language. It was absolutely amazing that you could learn through the game of basketball, that orange ball of a communication aspect of learning through that game and teaching just how important it is that the game truly is about life. And the pictures of that trip are incredible. I encourage you to Google it and find them out. Let's talk about specific players. You've got two that are, that are standouts. How have you challenged both of them this season? You know, I, I think the biggest factor for Shantae Hales, preseason all-conference, mm -hmm. and Megan Brown, our lone senior on our squad this year, leadership. Mm -hmm. And that has to be a must for them. Uh, we have seen some inconsistencies, to be very honest with you there, and it's because sometimes they're too nice. <laughs> you know, they are very nice individuals, and we have challenged them to have a little bit of toughness about them not just on playing because physically they lead every day, right. but to be vocal. We've got to have some vocal leadership consistently from them. And they have accepted that challenge, and we've been able to see some progress, especially in the last two weeks. And that's always good. I love the, the line. You said your first practice, you moved too fast. That's exactly but you'd right. But rather, you'd rather pull back than have to try to prod them. You know, and that's right. And, you know, we're going to, it's going to be fast and we're moving quickly. We even do station work sometimes in our practice. You know, it's three minute station and it's quick. And again, again, I think that teaches pace. 
Uh, but again, you just have to, sometimes you get them acclimated to that and then you have to pull them back. But I'm really proud of Shante Hales and Megan Brown and their efforts to try to lead this basketball team. Well, we look forward to talking to you some more. And now we go to Doc Sadler, 16 and 18, but forget about the record. Last year in the Conference USA tournament, right across the street, you upset Middle Tennessee. Probably one of the most exciting games I've ever had the pleasure of calling. What did that mean to you to have that happen with that team? Well, I think a lot of things, John, you know, uh, bottom line is any any time you've, you know, had the, the, the struggles that we've had and, and you continue to talk about certain things and, you know, time will come and, and everything's going to work itself out uh, and then for it to actually come true, then that gives you some credibility. And, you know, I don't care what anyone says, when you're not winning a lot of basketball games, sometimes as a coach you could lose some credibility, right. but you continue just to – to talk about the things that you believe in. And then when you do have a big win like we did, then, you know, at the same time, it gives your team some confidence, not only in themselves, but maybe gives some confidence in the program. Well, Doc has increased Conference USA wins every year. And back, you go back and you look uh, at the lack of scholarships in 20, I guess it was 2018, nine scholarships last year. You'll have 12 this year. You said it feels like a thousand. No question about it, you know, and, and, the, and the thing about it, I think more than anything, two things have you've been able to see a difference. Obviously, the competition practices is so much better. But, you know, being able to hold kids accountable to small things that maybe you weren't able to do and to, to build the culture that you would like to have built, built uh, now you're able to do that. And so hopefully, again, uh, you know, you're going to see another step. And, and, and with the five seniors that we have, then I think that we should be, uh, that at the end of the year, we should be able to see that, uh, again, the program's taken another step. You had my favorite comment of the mm -hmm. year, though. He said he's so excited, so many, returners started, so many returning starters. Biggest concern, so many returning starters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, again, again uh, the thing that you have there is you've got some guys that have been through this program that has been difficult. And uh, you've got to you've got to somehow, some way, get them to believe in themselves and the things that uh, you know can make you a confident player. Because when it comes down to it, confidence is such a huge key, and there's nothing that builds more confidence than winning. So we've got to get past that step of you know of of, of you know maybe their freshman and sophomore years when they right. played and weren't successful. Now they can take another step. Better rebounding, interior defense, two keys this year? Yeah, I mean, there's so many keys, but that's two of them, obviously, and I think any team that you have is going to be going to have those two things involved, but uh, we'll have a little bit more size, and with size, you know, you would think that some of those things would be corrected, but, you know, the bottom line, those things that you're talking about, a lot of times, it's just, you know, the want, right? and uh, so right now, the, the want seems to be there, so I think we will be uh, a little bit better in those areas. Talk about specific players now who have well, to step up. All of them. If you're going to be any good in anything, you know, your seniors have to play the best they've played in their whole career. And as you mentioned, we've got five of them, and all five of those guys uh, have, to, have to have the best year they've ever had. And if they do that and they continue to buy into each other, uh, and then they bring the young kids along because the freshman group is one of the most talented group, if not the most talented mm -hmm. since I've been there. But no way are they even close to being ready to play. And as I said the other day to a coaching friend of mine, uh, you know, there's such a gap. And he said, well, there should be. And he's right. There should be a big gap. But uh, if the young kids come along, then we got a chance. Tyree Griffin, uh, better yeah. than two to one assist to turnover over ratio. I consider him a true point guard, but he still can score. He can. He's just a good basketball player. And, uh, you know, I, I know the league has a lot of good point guards, but there's no point guard in this league that I would trade Tyree for. Uh, you know, he is going to be a guy that uh, when he gets between those lines, there's really only one thing that he's thinking about, and that's competing. And is he always going to make the right decision and make every shot? Of course not. But the thing that you don't have to worry about is that he's not on the court with a different uh, agenda. He's going to have the agenda that you need to have as a point guard, and that's winning. Cortez Edwards, everybody talks about his scoring, but what got my attention last year was his defense. Well, Cortez is, is a, a, a player, uh, Ron, that just can do a lot of different things. Is he going to be a great shooter? No. But as you mentioned in the Middle Tennessee game, he hits three threes, mm -hmm. you know, and so uh, he's – 
his basketball IQ along with Kevin Hollins are two of the highest basketball IQs I've ever coached. And so those two guys in themselves allow the other players to make mistakes because those two is going to be there to cover it up for them. Allen, almost 42% from three-point land last season. Dominic uh, McGee, number three yeah. scorer on the team, raised his average in Conference USA games. You said you challenged him because you told him the clock is ticking. Yeah, uh, again, the five seniors, it's about <clears throat> over with, and it's going to get here quicker than they know. And, and to be honest with you, Dominic <clears throat> is going to be a player that if he has a – if he has a, as good a year as he can have, then we're going to have a good basketball team. If he doesn't, then we're going to be okay. That's how important he is to the success that we end up having. And, and uh, so hopefully he's matured a little bit, and hopefully he has a great year. Folks, two of my favorites. Always good to see you two. Thanks, man. We wish Thank you, the you very best. much. Appreciate all you did. We wish you the best of the season. Thank you. We'll continue with more coming up.